So, we've just finished What Next, which ran on TVNZ last week. Is this the future of uh, democracy in New Zealand? Well, I think we've probably already seen some of that kind of thing with the Arab Spring and other countries that are trying to move to democracies. Um, so that, that internet space gets used a lot already. But I think what we saw in that kind of engaging online while watching something online addressing really key issues was interesting. And I think, I think the way in which technology is being taken up by young people particularly means that this is a real avenue for more participation. Now, one of the goals of the shows was to try and get politicians thinking longer term. Um, you know, how, how do we go about doing that? If, if people really do did show a, a desire to, to think about the world 20 years out, you know, will our politicians respond? This is, this is really the, a perplexing question, I would say, because the thing about politicians is, especially in New Zealand where we only have a three-year term, is that they're really thinking about getting re-elected. Now, they, when they first get elected, they'll want to play the long game. Um, you know, we've seen our current government is possibly going to win its fourth term, but that's usually in an election, uh, you know, cycle is usually three elections would be the most. So you get, what, nine years? That's nowhere near 20 years, 30 years that we need to be doing some future proofing. So, so they have to have a change of mindset. But what we're also seeing overseas is governments are deciding to put in place um, future commissioners or ministries for the future. Mm. And, and this might be an avenue that a, serious, a government serious about doing future proofing might consider. What, one of the things that came up on the show, on, particularly on the last night, was around the, the ability to, to, to give the government license to fail sometimes, right? There was, a, there was a sense that came out in the, on the online conversations and in the conversation amongst the show, they're often too hard on, on ministers or politicians or parties that have tried something bold um, and, and, and it's failed. Um, do you think that's, is that, a, is that a, are there countries that do that better? Have we got somewhere to go here? Well, I think um, being bold requires some planning. And I do think the just-in-time policy making environment does prevent governments from taking the opportunity to go bold. I think also what we know is that uh, countries where there are strong sub-national arrangements, so strong local governments that have quite a lot of autonomy and devolved budget responsibilities, what that enables is um, a laboratory sort of style government. So we see in federal systems and we see in local government systems like Sweden, where local government is strong, that new initiatives that are bold get taken in that laboratory-like space. Mm. And if they work, then national governments take them up and run with them. So I would say that in New Zealand, we neither have the commissioner of the future type space for that, let's design something bold, but nor do we have, you know, enabled local government to be able to say, let's try a new public transport strategy or let's try a new social, social housing strategy just in this space. Um, and if it works, yay, let's go with it nationally. So we're not, I don't think we're designed yet to, to go bold.